There wasn't always a lake here, and the limestone beds below the spillway were not always visible. So let's go back a few years. Back a few million years. About 375 million years, actually, to see how we got what we have today. This part of Iowa was once covered by a shallow, tropical inland sea, complete with sharks and coral reefs. The ocean was near the equator, and the era is known as the Devonian period. During this time of Earth's history, the continents were slowly drifting together, eventually to combine, forming the supercontinent Pangaea. The drifting of these land masses on great plates is called plate tectonics. As the land masses crashed together, mountains rose, wore down, and were lifted again. Sea levels rose and fell, and the ocean shorelines moved in and out. As the plants and animals died, they were buried in lime mud. Layer after layer of lime mud was deposited, and when the mud changed into rock, the dead creatures were turned into fossils. Creatures with hard shells, or skeletons, became part of the rock, while those with only soft parts may have been preserved as impressions. Then, the land masses started drifting apart. Millions of years passed. Climates changed, and glaciers developed, moving through Iowa several times, eroding and shaping the landscape. These massive glaciers scoured the land, leaving behind glacial till when they melted. Glacial meltwaters created great rivers that carved out valleys. One such meltwater river carved out the Iowa River Valley in what is now Johnson County. Like all rivers, the Iowa River wandered within its valley, filling old channels with river sediments, some from melting glaciers to the north, and cutting new channels into the limestone that had once been a tropical ocean floor. Thousands of years passed, and then a dam was built. Record floods that swept the nation in the early 1930s prompted Congress to establish the Flood Control Act of 1938. In an attempt to reduce flooding of the Mississippi River, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers was authorized to construct several dams on the tributary rivers, including the Iowa River. Not only could the dam help control flooding on the Mississippi River, it would benefit the communities of Iowa City and Coralville as well. Floods of 1881, 1918, and 1947 damaged facilities in downtown Iowa City and on the University of Iowa campus. The Coralville Dam began holding water in 1958. The top of the dam is 743 feet above sea level, 60 feet above the normal pool of 683 feet. The top of the emergency spillway is 712 feet above sea level. Normal Summer Lake level is 683 feet above sea level, or 29 feet below the spillway. This tremendous water storage capacity has spared areas downstream from the dam's serious flooding on numerous occasions. Then, in 1993, spring rains kept the reservoir above the 700-foot level from April 5th on, but flooding below the dam was avoided. In June 1993, over 12 inches of rain fell on the lake, with some areas upstream receiving much more than that. By July 1st, this rain had pushed the lake level to 711.4, just inches below the top of the spillway. The constant rains then caused this. At 10.30 on July 5th, 1993, the spillway was overtopped for the first time in the operational history of the dam. While inflows of up to 36,000 cubic feet of water per second occurred, outflows never exceeded 25,800 cubic feet per second. This imbalance of flows caused the pool to rise higher and higher, finally cresting at level 716.71 on the morning of July 24th. In all, water flowed over the emergency spillway for 28 consecutive days, 
finally ending on August 2, 1993. When the water finally dropped below the spillway, the area that had once been a small campground was now a 15-foot deep gorge, exposing an expanse of limestone bedrock. The damage you see behind me is a result of the water flowing over the emergency spillway. The water was about five feet deep going over the top of the spillway and as you can see you had an awful lot of force to be able to do this much damage. Prior to the flows over the spillway the area was a, a flat level uh, campground primarily was the use of this area. Visitors could actually walk across what had once been an ocean floor of lime mud and discover for themselves evidence of ancient ocean creatures that lived there 375 million years ago. This fairly flat exposure of those limestone beds is what makes this area such an unparalleled treasure. From local, small-town newspapers to national and worldwide news media, Mark Carter, CNN, Corville, Iowa. The Gorge received sweeping attention. People as far away as Australia came just to see this site. In 1996, a group of interested individuals from the surrounding community, working closely with the Corps of Engineers, formed a committee that came up with a plan for development of the area. Donations poured in from local industry, especially the limestone producers. The plan was carried out and the site was dedicated in 2001. An entry plaza offers people a place to enjoy the site from a distance. Interpretive panels mounted on limestone monoliths told the story of the flood and the tropical ocean that once covered Iowa. Concrete walkways and park benches assured the visitor a pleasantly accessible experience. Years passed. The gorge changed as natural processes took place. Wind and rain, ice and heat, the forces of nature worked to fill in the gorge once more. Vegetation crept back in, and the thin top layer of limestone fractured into thousands of loose pieces due to weathering by the harsh Iowa climate. Then, 15 years after the first flood, history repeated itself on June 10th, 2008. This time, the water flowed over the spillway for only 10 days, but the inflows and outflows far exceeded the 1993 numbers. A number of factors played a role in the 2008 event. The first six months of 2008 were the wettest recorded in Iowa. Prior conditions contributed also. 2007 was the fourth wettest year in 135 years. Soils were saturated and river flows were higher than normal. The winter of 2007 and 2008 was persistently cold and unusually wet. It was the eighth wettest winter on record, according to the state climatologist Harry Hilliker. The spring of 2008 was unusually cool and wet. April 2008 was the second wettest April ever. The cool and wet days prevented evaporation with drying between rain events. The Devonian Fossil Gorge was a roaring river of white water once again, with the maximum outflow of 39,500 cubic feet per second on June 15th, approximately 19,500 was coming over the emergency spillway and through the gorge. Actual inflows from upstream were finally calculated at 57,000 cubic feet per second. The dam held back 17,500 cubic feet of water per second from flowing through Iowa City and Coralville. If the dam had not been here, core hydrologists calculated the flood level in these communities would have been five feet higher. So even though the water overtopped the spillway, the dam was still providing some flood control for areas downstream. Outflows from the outlet works, combined with the overflow through the gorge, created an astounding backwater in Tailwater West. The river below the dam seemed to be flowing back on itself back into the stilling basin of the outlet tube. One feature damaged by the floodwaters of 2008 
is the sidewalk that slopes down into the biostrom, an outcrop of fossilized coral reef. The sidewalk lost approximately half of the lower sections, and above that, the sidewalk was severely undercut. Several of the lowest and oldest limestone boulders were also completely washed away. These boulders weighed several tons. The concrete deck in front of the outcrop is now gone, and the fossilized coral reef, known as the Biostrom, is about half the size from before. The mysterious mound of old river sediments that was left behind in 1993 was completely washed away. Fortunately, the many layers of Devonian Age limestone total almost 200 feet thick in this location. Therefore, even though almost 20,000 cubic feet of water per second rushed through here, we are still viewing the Devonian ocean floor. The greatest transformation is at the southernmost end of the gorge, where the floodwaters rejoined the Iowa River Channel. This narrow part of the gorge had become quite overgrown and rugged, but is now widened and scoured down to the bare bedrock once again. These floods made history, but they also helped reveal some ancient history to us. What used to be Lower Cottonwood Campground below the spillway was turned into a window on the past, allowing us to glimpse that ancient ocean floor from 375 million years ago. The Devonian Fossil Gorge, scoured clean again in 2008, continues to tell the story of giant fish, coral reefs, and strange ocean creatures from millions of years ago, capturing the imagination of the youngest student to the oldest visitor. Hundreds of school children take field trips here. Busloads of senior citizens tour the gorge, and individuals from all over the world travel to experience this exceptional geological treasure. The public is invited to view and enjoy this unique site. Thank you for visiting.